Hey, but welcome to Back Issues of Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Aquaman is getting one last movie before the DCEU gets buried in the ground. <laughs> and in that movie, Jason Momoa is wearing a blue suit. Why? Because of this comic book from 1986, when Aquaman got a blue suit. That's it. Because everybody kind of knows Aquaman's origins, thanks in part to the fact that the first Aquaman movie made a billion dollars. Because I live in that reality. But in Did that he one, make of that course, much? yeah, Aquaman. Wow. Okay. So this, of course, is Aquaman, Volume 2 from 1986, the post-crisis new innovation to revitalize Aquaman because, I don't know if you know this, but Aquaman is not a popular character, <laughs> and he never really was. He, he was so but unpopular that his book got canceled long before this series launched, and he was relegated to being on Justice League Detroit. Oh. A and landlocked state. Yes, and this was during the time when in his power set, if he didn't get in the water after an hour, <laughs> he'd die. Die? <laughs> well, he gets so weak and frail that right. eventually he would die. Uh, but <laughs> Aquaman also had kind of a weird situation where he was really unlikable. Mm. Not like now. <laughs> but I mean, here's the thing. Jason Momoa yeah. is great. Yes, he's 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 got charisma and he, he brought an amazing you know, new personality to Aquaman. Yeah, what if Lobo was Aquaman? Yeah, <laughs> right. In Justice League Detroit, he was portrayed by Jerry Conway as just kind of being like this jackass. Like he was always quick to anger and he was always mm. just like pissed off and he was a pill. He was just no one's favorite member of the Justice League and he led the damn team. It's because no one <laughs> wanted him there. No, well because his book got canceled, what the hell are we gonna do? We got Aquaman, we wanna get some exposure on this character because we own the damn character. Let's do something with him, put him on Justice League. Of course put him on Justice League. He's one of the like core members of the Justice League. So he's on there with like Gypsy and Vibe. <laughs> cool. And Aquaman, at least I know him. But yeah, so he's miserable, which of course, as a 90s kid, he was never not. I've only known Aquaman to be pissed off and miserable all the time. <laughs> but this book seeks to make him more relatable and fun. And I'm like, thank you. I haven't seen that in a long time. But it's also- schlock? I mean, yeah, it's schlock. Well, it is Aquaman. It is Aquaman after all, <laughs> don't forget. Like, no, this is, this this really, adds to the Aquaman mythology while also building off of mythology that was set up in DC in the 80s that was cemented thanks to the post-crisis continuity. Mm. Like, we're, like we're talking about continuity from books like Warlord and Arion. And you're like, why? And Ponzer's like, because I want to add like magic and mythology. That might have a lot to do with the fact that originally Ponzer had a pitch for Wonder Woman. Because for him, he's like, why is it Wonder Woman one of the like tent poles of the DC universe. Like she is, but only because we say she is. But like the sales don't reflect that. What are we gonna do about this? So Dick Giordano's like, dude, you are the only person who's piped up and said anything about that. Knock yourself out, write me something. So Ponzer does, and then he gives it to Giordano and he's like, that's cool. And then he puts it next to some other pitches he heard for Wonder Woman. And Ponzer's like, whoa, 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 you got other ideas for Wonder Woman? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, oh, well then I don't wanna do that. And he's like, okay, well, if you wanted to make Wonder Woman a big deal and you're not gonna do that, why don't you take that energy and put it into another one of our relegated characters that we don't care about, that we should be promoting in any way. And so he's like, hmm. And this is all, by the way, in like issue two. Like he just, he just openly admits this in 1986, <laughs> which is why we need to add more context pages to our comic books because in real time, Pons is like, here's what I was thinking. DC couldn't give sh two shits about Wonder Woman. So I gave it a try and-, and Turns then, out neither did I. And then I went with Aquaman. And it's like, oh. <laughs> so he just, did he take the same story that he had written for Wonder Woman and just like shoehorn it into the Aquaman universe? Probably. Is that? Is that... I mean, no, no, he did a lot of research, or at least oh, okay. he claims to have made a lot of research for Aquaman in terms of, he looked up like ancient myths about Atlantis oh. and he connects a lot of the dots from mythology that were set up in the other like fantasy corners of the DC universe to make Atlantis like a real thing, or at least a thing, because for the longest time it was just like, and Aquaman's, you know, he's from Atlantis. He's not really from Atlantis. Well, Actually, he's like barely Atlantean. His dad was a lighthouse keeper. He met some chick in the ocean. He banged her. She had a baby. And then it was Aquaman. And then she died. And then that dude 
who was like, I'm lonely. I met some chick at the grocery store and he knocks her up, has Orm, his brother, and then you've got one kid that's half Atlantean that can swim in the ocean without breathing and like has super strength and all this other shit, telepathy with fish and stuff, and then Orm. Just a normal who's kid. Just some kid. <laughs> and so he's he, got a chip on his shoulder. Who's Orm. really pissed. Yeah, O R M. Yeah, also his name's Orm, which like, you know, I'm sorry. That is that was the origin, by the way, because in the new origin, and when I say new, I mean like from 40 years ago, <laughs> but the one they used for every other piece of iconography you can find for Aquaman. Well, this is the post crisis. Yeah, this is the post crisis. Well, it's they didn't really like redo the origin until later. This is oh. post crisis, but it still reinforced the old one because there was no like marching order. Oh. Like for some things, they're like, <laughs> we're gonna do this, this, and this for Superman, and for Aquaman, they're like, we'll just use the shit that we had left over. Just because we had a crisis doesn't mean we throw away everything that came uh, before. They certainly didn't. I mean, like, Jason Todd was still Robin. Like, he was Robin pre-crisis, right. and then post-crisis, they're like, so, but is he still Robin? And they're like, yeah, but change his costume a little bit. <laughs> like, make it just Dick's costume, and then kill him. <laughs> but uh, Oh, good. Yeah, so Orm is Aquaman's half-brother, but the continuity we know, he's actually half-Atlantean as well. That the... Queen of the Ocean or whatever was brought back to Atlantis where she met somebody else and then had Orm. So it's like his mom is shared between the brothers, but in the original continuity, Wait. or one of the original continuities, the one that we're operating here, Orm is from the father. Okay. So Who Aquaman was just and Orm, a lighthouse keeper. Just some. Just a human guy. Yes. Just who some liked human. the water, maybe. Well, he had to because he lived next to it. So either Orm is full human or full Atlantean. Yes, that's right. That's mm. right. And it's like, he's either justifiably pissed or unreasonably pissed. <laughs> but he's still a psycho. And uh, he's really portrayed as one in this. And it also kind of retcons Orm, Ocean Master as we know him, mm. uh, in a big way because Ocean Master, for the most part, hasn't really changed much. You know, He's Aquaman's pissed off brother. But he, most of his crap is science-based or ancient Atlantean science-based. Right. Okay. You know, it's like how he's able to like walk around underwater. Otherwise, Aquaman's just like, okay, Orm, grab, bring underwater, wait literally three minutes, <laughs> and I win. Dead. But uh, Orm has managed to figure out like ways around that by like fighting him using Atlantean technology. But in this, we really ramp up the magic side of Aquaman's origins, which is to say we create them and establish them. Oh, I was gonna say, you mean invent them from whole cloth? 100%. Okay. So, I mean, what is Atlantis if not a mythical place? Well, that's very true. Right, there should be magic and stuff. Yeah. And, or and, it could be, I don't know. Well, who gives you a weren't shit? there. Right, I'm making it up now. I'm doing right. it now, here you go. <laughs> and so, and I, and I kind of appreciate it because Ponzer whips up a bunch of stuff where you're like, oh yeah, that guy kind of tracks. When was that invented? Here? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Aquaman 1986. The thing we really haven't addressed yet is the fact that he has a new costume. Right. That was another element that like Ponzer wanted, that Hamilton executed, that no one could draw. So it's got a lot of complicated colors and shapes and patterns. I mean, it's really yeah. just, and on the cover here, it looks like it's, it's mostly just blue. It's just hues and shades of blue. And it's supposed to be a stealth suit. You know, because like he's camouflaged, because he's in the ocean. Right. And then he should look like a shark with a white belly and a darker it's top. <laughs> 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 yeah, I guess that's, that's true. That's a good point. That is a good point. Yeah. But uh, in this, it, they were more focused on like the physicality of Aquaman. Like every point on his suit points to another part of his body that moves. It'll be easy to draw. These are all quotes because the suit flows with the natural movement of his body. And George effing Perez, who drew Crisis and Infinite Earths and JLA Avengers, two of the most jam-packed, complicated looking books I've ever seen in my life, was like, I'm not drawing that shit. It's hard. It's friggin' hard. It's it's complicated and hard. And I'm There's like, no reference points to know where these words doesn't make it easy for me to draw. Yeah, I don't even know yeah. what that's supposed to mean. What points are pointing at <laughs> movement? He's like, did an artist say that? Yes, actually, no. Like a, a, a classically trained, non typical comic book artist said that. Huh. And so we have this thing. It looks like he's someone put on commando camouflage. Um, he's wearing camouflage. He is yeah. he's in a stealth suit. It's, it's, you got to break up. The shape, yeah, like with he, other shapes. Because he's gonna be moving. So your gonna... eye doesn't quite know what it's looking right. at. Right? How about the blonde hair, though? 
oh, well, I got to see his gorgeous flowing locks. Naturally. Yeah. No, he has to have free hair. Yeah. I don't hate the suit, but it is not iconic. Like, it does no. not work for me. I appreciate it in as much as someone thought to try it. And in 86, it's the time to do it. Like, so, because new costumes were confused for being <laughs> new stories. But we also got one anyway, so it's okay. So next year for Halloween, you're gonna dress up as a uh, blue suit Aquaman? Yeah, there's no effing way I'm gonna put myself in this thing. <laughs> First of all, because no one on earth could manufacture it. And secondly, because uh, my proportions don't exactly match Arthur's. <laughs> Aquaman's gonna get a new suit that will immediately go in the garbage bin. <laughs> We say immediately. Well, like, how many issues do we get out of this suit? I was gonna say four. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, just this series. Hey, at least it makes it to the end of this series. Yeah, well, right. because series. there's no point where he can change. <laughs> right, it's just like I put it on and everything just flowed from there. Yes, it's all happening but in real time. As soon as I get a second, I'm putting on my I old suit. I put on my old suit. Not because he hates it, right. but because literally, metatextually, everyone around him hates it. <laughs> the idea was that Arthur's like, I need to be a better ambassador to the surface world from Atlantis and stuff. So I, I, people. Oh, my camo suit doesn't do that. No, people know me as Aquaman, so I gotta like, I gotta like put on appearances, you know? Yeah. Also, they were gonna do a sequel to this series. DC immediately greenlit it because it did well. Hmm. Well, not like crazy well, because I don't know where the collection is for this, and no one remembers it or talks about it fondly. So hmm. I'm like, did it? I mean, it didn't survive the test of time. Maybe in 86, people were just like gobbling up everything. Like, the director market is on the horizon. I just got to buy all the comic books. Aquaman's got a blue suit. I'll buy that. Give it to me. Okay. And then uh, they, they tried to do a sequel. That was the 80s. Cocaine was big. That's right. I'm just like, yeah. It's going everywhere. Watchmen, Dark Knight Returns, Blue Suit Aquaman! <laughs> yeah, big That's time. That's probably as good. No. It's fine. Look, it's an Aquaman story, right? It's cool. I appreciate any effort, and it's a genuine one. It's not like some ham-fisted hacky, like, I'm just gonna write this other story. I mean, I did just approximate it to being like a rejected Wonder Woman pitch, <laughs> but he does tailor it. Look, he tailors it, he tailors okay, it. Okay, yeah. You know, I mean, look, look, you're not just gonna throw every idea you have in the garbage, especially when you're given a golden opportunity based on nothing. And then Aquaman yeah. fights Hecate. <laughs> Damn, it doesn't work. No, fish Hecate. <laughs> like, I mean, that's basically what happens. I mean, let's face it, every story is another story. Yeah, that's exactly. That's done somewhere. Yeah, right? Yeah. With every, all just riffing on existing stories. On the stories. same four stories. Yeah. As any hacky creative writing professor will tell you, there's only three stories <laughs> anyway, so why not rip off the best ones? And you chose Aquaman. I did. Well, because there's a movie coming out, and it's the last one hmm. they're probably ever going to make. So let's jump on it. The last time we did an Aquaman book because was because an Aquaman movie was coming out. We. The, if we're and ever gonna do another Aquaman book, it has to it's be, gotta now. be now. It has to be now. No one's gonna ask for blue. Hope I mean, you didn't want a different Aquaman book because uh, this is it. This is it. No, I mean, look, look. There's always the potential for doing more Aquaman stories, but a blue suited Aquaman is gonna be in theaters. We have, and to we have that. the blue suited Aquaman book. We have to strike while the riptide is pulling. Yeah, that universe is over. They shot cameo scenes for that movie that they had to cut back out because it would be more confusing because there is no universe to go back to. <laughs> so, Aquaman 86, Arthur Curry has moved from his lighthouse in Maine to New Venice, Florida with his wife Mara. That's right. I He's... thought he was in Detroit. No, 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 no. Okay, that was when he was on the Justice League and that's only for being the leader of the Justice League, but he quit the Justice League prior to this. Okay. Went back to Maine and then moved immediately to I, I I think he might have been bouncing between. Like, uh, I, okay. I think the lighthouse is, is, is over. He's like, right. you know what? I really like Florida a lot more than Maine. Maine, <laughs> picturesque. Yeah. It's quiet. Yeah. I get to live in my lighthouse in the like fall, my dad did. I love the leaves. Is it coincidentally? But I can't like party and do cocaine off the hooker's <laughs> back in Maine. I mean, you can, it's just a lot harder and- you And know, colder. You're, yeah. And, you know, your it, pickings are slimmer. Is it like, it, it turns winter and he's like, I'm done, I'm going oh, to Florida. I'm, I'm a snowbird. Uh, that's what I am. Right? No, the last December in the lighthouse, he's looking at the snow and he's like, that's I'm, it. I'm you know what I bothers him so much? He's just like, he sees the snow, he's just like, no, no, no I do not have room. This is an abomination. This would never happen under the water. <laughs> so, Arthur has a place set up in New Venice, Florida with his wife, Mara, and they're having a grand old time. Presumably, who could know? No one read Aquaman, and there's no book. Aquaman right. is only checked in on in <laughs> Conway's Justice League book, and he quit. So this is it, this is all you're getting. And before we even get to that, we gotta do a 
brand new history lesson about gods and magic and talking about how like Atlantis existed and it was on the surface and there were actually multiple different like tribes of what would be sects of Atlantis and they were all on the surface and it was millions of years ago and yes we're millions talking, yeah millions of years oh ago my God. and there was like technology lost because of the magic era of, of, of mankind right. and we just take a lot of things for granted like big time you know like the elders used the Earth's core for mystical vitality. Like, okay, what, what elders? It, shut the up. Atlantean ones. Well, no, no, no. And these <laughs> may be elders connected to warrior or Arion, but moving on. Right. Uh, just explain. Unless like, that's contradicted by anything, in which case, oh, uh, different ones. Exactly. Well, that's why we call them elders lowercase e. But as a byproduct of their magical usage, there also came these 12 crystals that were placed across the globe that were allowed to create balance and harmony between like the magical Son of world. A bitch. Yeah, right. There's and there of course the zodiac signs, but also that like part of the death of the magical period of earth millions of years ago right. was this battle between these two brothers. And there's just two brothers, and one of them is Arion and his brother Garn or something like that. These fraternal brothers who also had, well, Arion had his own book, but Garn, his origins are connected to that and like how he's bleached white and stuff like that. You just gotta read that book from the <laughs> 80s and knock yourself out if you want to. But uh, So that's a real thing, they didn't make that up. No, exactly, like he made up some shit about these elders and about the crystals, but then like connected it directly with Arion and Garn and their okay. like, big battle and it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of fun, neat. So when I was in Las Vegas, I went, I stayed at Caesar's Palace yeah. for work, and they have a display thing with animatronics and crap mm. that depicts the fall of Atlantis, and this seems like very familiar. So I do wonder if they pulled from some sort of mythology yeah. because there were brothers yeah. and there was conflict between oh. them, and it led to the fall of Atlantis. Maybe Ponzer did like heavier research than I assume. He did say he did like a ton of research on Atlantis mm. and wanted to make it as like real as possible. Well, I mean, and maybe every, it was. Every man apparently is searching for the lost treasure of Atlantis. So we check in on New Venice, you know, the new home or presumed home of Aquaman and Mera, and uh, it gets uh, annihilated. Oh, okay. It must be just like wherever their home is and any uh, adjourning areas around it are just destroyed that's by this some, bolt from the that's blue. That's crazy forceful sex. Yeah, it's just Aquaman and Mera just, just wrecking just fucking the place. slamming in the ocean, exactly. surging with the tide. So uh, Aquaman and Mera spring into action. They're going to do their thing. And it's actually funny because like Mera is really capable and cool in this story, mm -hmm. even though she's only in like three pages uh, throughout the entire thing and then Aquaman almost cheats on her. But like she was actually considered after this in the sequel to this story that they never made uh, to being kind of like more of a superhero. Like they were like, well, why don't we just use Mera? Like Aquaman could be like a king or some crap. I mean, mm. he doesn't sell books. We'll just make Mera the new main attraction. Right. And I'm like, what a fantastic idea 35 years ago. <laughs> They're checking it out. And then Ocean Master shows up and he's like, hey assholes, I'm the one who did that. That's right, you thought I was some like podunk, crappy, lame ass Aquaman villain. And while that is true, I also can blow shit up with like my mind and stuff. And they're like, what the hell? And Aquaman's like, you piece of shit, I wanna fucking wreck your day. And you're like, oh my God, Aquaman, take it down. Here's what's wailing on him. He's like, yeah, well, no, I live in Florida now. I'm on the roids. I ate bath salts. And it literally- Seems like he took it too far this time. I mean, he definitely did. Well, he blew up his home. He blew up his home and a bunch of people. <laughs> You know, people we don't even get to meet. Like, I'm a bad guy. I'm a murdered right, this, is what, like, this is what happens when bad guys have this power. Powerful. Like, oh. what the fuck, man? Dad liked you more, blah, blah, blah. Oh, seriously? <laughs> like, who gives a shit? <laughs> Just wailing on him. And while he's Dude, you're 40, let it go. <laughs> while he's beating on him, Mara's trying to save the city that was destroyed. <laughs> you know, there's fires raging and people drowning and burning to death. And she's like, ahem, Arthur, maybe stop wailing on your brother for a second and try and be a superhero. And he's like, shut the fuck Stay out of this. <laughs> like, he literally is like completely ignoring her and just starts beating on Orm. Now, to be fair, what's he gonna do? Talk to fish? Hey, He's also powerful. Her. He could kick ass. Yeah, but she's putting out fires with her water abilities. Right. That that's true. Her mm. powers are more fun and interesting, subjectively speaking. Very true. So, in uh, his defense as well, what if Ocean Master decides to start shooting decides more to stuff? Shoot more stuff. Like somebody does have to deal with it. Exactly. Right? Like can't no, just ignore him. It's true, but uh, Arthur seems to be kind of like getting lost in it. Uh, and uh, yes. and then Ocean Master displays 
incredible feats of strength and he's able to hold his own against Arthur and that really pisses him off. But then Ocean Master's like, how about I just choke you out, you son of a bitch? And then he just decides, wait, you know what? I'm not gonna kill you. I'll kill you later. Ha 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 And then leaves. And Aquaman like and wakes up. A- Dream, okay. No, this really happens. Aquaman wakes up from being choked out by his brother and goes, yeah, not from a dream. Holy shit, Ocean Master's taking it to the limit this time. <laughs> Why did I wake up with an erection though? <laughs> Mara, note for later. <laughs> so he's like, what the fuck? And he's asking all these like, rhetorical questions like, where did he get these powers from? Why didn't he kill me? What did he destroy this place? And Mara's like, yo, <laughs> fire everywhere. And he's like, huh? And then he looks around, he's like, oh! Oh my God. They also like find their wedding photo with their dead infant child, like floating in the water, like pick it up and look at it. It's Aqua like, Baby. For a second. We haven't talked about Aqua Baby. I think we have talked about Aqua Baby yeah. like way long ago. A long time ago, Aquaman and Mera had a baby and Black Manta killed it. That's it. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Which is why when I saw the trailer for the new Aquaman 2, I was like, oh no. <laughs> Like, Aquaman has a baby, and Black Manta is in the movie, and I'm like, here we go! Oh, man. Oh, boy, infanticide in my (laughs) superhero movies. I love those. So we check in with Atlantis. Volko, who we know to be the guy who trained Aquaman in the later retconned origin, is just king of Atlantis here. No, Aquaman's dad trained Aquaman. Oh. In the pre-crisis and temporarily post-crisis origin for Aquaman. Like Aquaman's dad just like, you're the best, you're awesome, I gotta train you so you can like take over the oceans or some shit. And just like dogmatically trained Aquaman and also kept like trumping him up like, you're the greatest, you're awesome, you're dope. Which kind of explains like Ocean Master's complexes. But mm. yeah, so, so, so Zolko is just the guy who runs Atlantis and is also Aquaman's buddy. Oh, okay. So he's not just a normal subject. He's no. close with. He's close with the King of Atlantis. Okay. And Volko is roused from his sleep because the guards have presented them a problem. Uh, their sacred sigil has been removed from its resting place and there's no earthly way it could have been recovered. And because Aquaman has also recently opened up communication and trade agreements with Atlantis and the surface world, the Atlanteans assume that the surface world must have stolen it. And there's a good reason for that, and it's actually explained and, and, and created here, is because the Atlanteans were normally an isolationist society that never knew about all these other tribes of Atlantis and stuff, or the surface world, or rather, they were aware of it, but they didn't communicate with them. Uh, when Aquaman is entered into the equation, he's like, well, let's let's open this bad boy up. But, the, but Atlantis was like, we were kind of happy being isolationists and xenophobic. And you kind of just opened the door to trade with what we consider to be like aliens, basically. Yeah, and lesser beings. Oh. Yeah, or at least unfamiliar beings that we're not cool with trading with. And so they're already pretty pissed at Volko for letting all that happen. And then their special magic thing that is of course one of the crystals that was established in the beginning of this book right. is missing. And they're like, any excuse. So they've been <laughs> bugging Volko off panel to declare war on the surface world lest they move for like a vote of no confidence in him and install a new, more warmongering monarch for Atlantis. Which of course they'll have no shortage of because they're all like this. So the anti-surface world faction was just, just happens to have been handed the thing that could most help rally support to their cause. Right. How right. convenient. Yeah. Right when Ocean oh, Master. convenient? And there's no evidence at all. How dare you? Yeah, how dare you? Right. So Volko's like, oh shit. How very real. So, and <laughs> what's even more real and funny is that Volko is like, all right, I can't kick the can down the road anymore. Mm. Or they will remove me Things and then they'll definitely do it. Yeah. So I'll just lie and say I'm going to do it. Okay, guys, let me get my war armor and declare war on the surface realm. And they're like, yeah, let's go! And so they're all going for it. He's like, okay, just gotta get my shoes on. Like, he just keeps slowing (laughs) down the process, but he is definitely gonna invade the surface world. Oh, it's gonna happen. Yeah, so Aquaman gets a call from Volko being like, hey, Arthur, you gotta get down here like right now, because shit's getting real, and it's gonna get real bad for you, even though I don't know about the attack on your like home turf. So Aquaman puts on his Aquaman costume, not the new one, and goes into the ocean to go find Volko. And while he's in there, he's like, oh man, this is where I belong. I love being in the ocean. I'm such a piece of shit. I'm not thinking about like my poor friend, like Mrs. Roback, who almost died from like falling debris. And so, and my wife can handle it. 
Well, plus, like, she's more cool and more powerful. She's got more powers than me anyway. Yeah, well, she might as well just do it anyway. Just clean up. What am I gonna do? Talk clean to this up fish? for me, would you? And so he goes, and then uh, he also sends out like a big telepathic wave to the fish in the area, who I guess tell other fish. So I would love to know what like the fourth chain of this fish telephone <laughs> gets. But the first wave is told to look for Ocean Master and tell Aquaman when they find him. But God knows what the fuck, like <laughs> level five of these fish, who are already fish. They're just fish. They're just fish after all. Think that their marching orders are from like the guy who tells them what to do. But uh, so that, that's, that's always looming, is that like fish are always on the lookout for Ocean Master for Aquaman. Okay. But uh, then, There's nowhere Ocean Master can hide well, the, except on land. Exactly, which of course he's on. Because right. he's also a goddamn guy. So <laughs> Aquaman sees one of the Atlanteans like doing some stuff on a seahorse. And he's like, hey! And before he can finish his sentence, he is immediately ensnared by a giant octopus. And he's like, hey, a big octopus? Well, I can tell this guy to let go. I can't, what the fuck? And then he gets dragged deeper and deeper I mean, into the depths. I can depths. tell him that, but the octopus doesn't have to fucking listen. No, he does. <laughs> Yeah, they I, all have to listen. I can actually command them. Exactly. What I the hell is happening? It's just communication ability. It is when Jeff Johns is in charge. But before that, <laughs> yeah. he is forcing he these things to do. He has control. Yeah, yeah. like oh, friggin' okay. Professor X yes, does over they, everyone. <laughs> but also, the fish like, like it. They're fine. Like they're fine they with like it. it. They're cool with it. So they're it, not very smart. They need someone to control. They really them. do. If it's not me, then who? Right? <laughs> not the cephalopods. They're intelligent. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why the octopus is That's just why like, the octopus yeah, he just shrugs yeah, it off. No, but the octopus is actually just a robot controlled by Volko. Oh. And uh, so he's brought into like a secret bunker that Volko has. And Volko's like, no one can know you're here because they're already pissed at you for opening up communication with the surface world. Why didn't you tell me to meet you in the secret place? Uh, you didn't know about the secret place. That's why it's a secret. So <laughs> he's like, look, there's no way that the surface world could do it because of our incredible security systems. Uh -huh. So it must have been magic which you're unfamiliar with because it hasn't been established in our lore yet. But trust me, there is, and actually, you opened up ties with like other different races of Atlanteans, but not this one, because those are magic Atlanteans that are isolated from us. And so what you need to do is you need to sneak over there because they're also isolationists, and you gotta get some different clothes, like your dope new costume that no oh. one's gonna wanna draw, and you're gonna have to go to 30 and Naog, who? Thernia Naog, which Aquaman does say. He goes, Thernia Na what? But, you know. <laughs> Thernia Naog. Oh, it's a place. It's a place. Yeah, I thought you said 30, like, Naog, like uh, it was a street. Right. <laughs> That's what, what I thought, too. Like an address. Yeah. I'm like, they use fucking addresses? I mean, no, they would in have the southwest <laughs> African Ocean. <laughs> they use, like, longitude and latitude at some point to describe where they're going. <laughs> but not names. Like, Okay, so Ponzer will give you like establishing names of where we're going because we need to establish them because they've never been established previously. <laughs> but also then later we're gonna go just to like one place that's just degrees of longitude and latitude. And I'm like, why? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Neither would they. Right, they don't use the same system we do. No, they do. So Aquaman's <laughs> gotta sneak over to Therny and Oog and see what those guys are up to. Maybe they use their magic to steal our sacred tome mm -hmm. that also is secretly like an ancient magical artifact that held together all the magics of the universe or at least earth millions of years ago so okay. meanwhile in Thernia and Oog we meet up with new characters because all this is being created right now right and so King Noda Silverhand was dethroned two rulers of Thernia and Oog or the one would-be ruler and the true rightful ruler are both women but they're referred to as kings fair so Silverhand okay. Noda Nauta Silverhand is the dethroned rightful king of Thernia and Oog. And then another person named Bress has taken her place. And Bress is much more hot-headed and warmongering and of course rests control. And she also was able to do so by using a, a magical conclave of, of sorceresses. Um, th there's okay. Uh, there's twelve sorceresses that use their combined magical mental uh, uh, powers to oh. aid Bress in her ability to like climb the corporate ladder, so to speak. To, to declare assume, herself king. Yes, I right. assume the twelfth one finally got their last crystal and they were able to use it. No, 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 no. No, it's, no, it's, just, it's, just, it's just it's just it's just synchronicity that there is twelve <laughs> conclaves and also 
12 mystical artifacts. No, they don't have anything to do with it. In fact, they do have their own mystical artifact like Atlantis does. Was it also stolen? Yes, it was. Someone's stealing all the artifacts. And they're pissed. And they yeah. assume that outsiders must have taken it. So which is also how Bress was able to get... They, well, it was they, don't, they don't immediately assume it is... Well, it was. But they don't assume it's Atlantis, but they're, they're, they're slower on the uptake than the Atlanteans. Mm. But they'll soon come to that conclusion, especially if they bump into like an Atlantean sneaking into their home. Right, in a brand new stealth suit. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what's going on here in this Aquaman book. It's Orm. That's all. Yeah, of course. Of course. No, no, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, to. you don't have to hide that. No, okay, you're supposed cool. to know, yeah. I think. Yeah, no, Ocean Master's the bad guy of the book. Yeah. And I was the bad guy of the book. I was like, oh, he's suddenly super powerful at the beginning. Oh, and there are these missile artifacts. Yeah, that he's stealing them and he's making his uh, powers. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. So Aquaman finds the city of Thurnin and Og. And Which is not Tyrn and Og. No. <laughs> Very different. Uh, he sees that there's like some dope warrior-esque looking, and when I say warrior, I mean a capital W uh, from DC Comics, but uh, <laughs> warrior looking Thernia Naogians who are guarding the entrance. Aquaman's like, hi, I'm sneaking into your pace. Can I come in? Why does the entrance have a uh, Celtic cross on it? I, it could be. That's that where it came some from. Kind of like, yeah, that's where Celtic lore and belief came from. It's the Thirty and the Ogs. All these cities were on land and then fell into the ocean. Not just Atlantis. All of them. Yeah. yeah. All of them. No, that's established in the first page. All of Atlantean and related societies. Yeah. Well, and maybe that's something to do fate. with Arion's battle and like the death of magic. Sure. So Aquaman's like, I got to get in here. These people are going to let me in. I know. So he summons a sperm whale and a giant squid. And the dudes go, whoa, look at those big things in the ocean. And Aquaman just sneaks right in. But before he can make it across the what? threshold, what they, idiots. they turn around, they go, hey, and they shoot him. And then he <laughs> wakes up in mystical chains in their prison. Oh my God. Whoa, look at those things. I'm sorry, did you think we were not gonna see you <laughs> yeah. sneak by? I have peripheral vision, <laughs> asshole. I mean, I did look at them and then I looked back because yeah. it's just a whale and a squid. I've right. seen that. I live underwater. I see them more often than most. And you're new. <laughs> you have blonde hair. There was a period in Aquaman's history where like having blonde hair set him apart from the Atlanteans. Them just going like, oh my God, you have blonde hair. <laughs> he shouldn't, they shouldn't have hair at all. Now, <laughs> so uh, Aquaman is now in prison alongside Silverhand. Oh. Because of course she was arrested. Did they explain why she was arrested? Like, was she too accommodating of the surface world? No, or, no, no. Or she, the they have no they're something? still isolated. They have no, no idea. No, she was oh, just they don't even know. No, she was just in charge, and then they lost their artifact, and Bress oh, saw an opportunity. Oh, because the artifact was removed. Yeah, okay. exactly. So it was, it, it's not random. It no. was triggered by events that are related Ex to, to the plot. The plot. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we see that, like, Ocean Master is able to blast stuff like ancient statues. Good for him. And uh, so Aquaman meets up with uh, Silverhand, and he's like, Huh, I'm in chains. I'm Aquaman. And then tries to break them and can't. It's very much a, a metaphor for erectile dysfunction. <laughs> you know, he looks impotent in front of this beautiful right. woman that's clearly modeled after Glenn Close. And that's canon. So <laughs> she's like, watch it, Stallion. Hang on a second. And then she gets like a call from like a holographic projection of one of her friends who's explaining the plot about the political intrigue going on in 30 and the Og, which we couldn't care less about, but we need to because we're here now. And so, uh, yeah, they're gonna... So Brass goes down there, the new king of 30 and the Og, it goes to gloat in front of Silverhand and also this guy, and oh, gee, coincidentally, our mystical artifact that we need has been stolen, and now suddenly this dude shows up right here with you, like, yeah, no, you hired this guy from outside. Like, I'm tying all the threads together well, to- What, he snuck in successfully, stole the thing, and then now is sneaking back in. returned to the scene of the in. crime and well, failed. Came yeah. back for payment. Hey, why not? They don't say that because we don't have time. But, <laughs> so Bress is now still king and gloating, and she's like, I'm going to kill both of you. In fact, when Silverhand, Silverhand wasn't always Silverhand. She's called that derisively because uh, Nauta has magical powers as well. They all kind of do. Um, but she was like the most powerful wizard or sorcerer in their land. And ergo, might makes right, she's the king. However, uh, she lost some of that ability somehow. And when Bress took the opportunity to usurp the throne, she then threw Nauta into the... Uh, 
gladiatorial arena to you know prove her worth and she lost her arm slash hand and then was replaced with a silver magical accoutrement that, that approximated, a prosthetic, if you will. Right, mm. and that's not what happens to Aquaman? No, well, Aquaman <laughs> hasn't been subjected to it yet, but he will. But we needed to know that like Nauta had already faced the horrors in the arena and she lost her arm and then got a new shiny awesome silver one. That's even better than that's, having- It's better than the other one because she feels the same with it as they say in the text, but whatever. Uh, also, they call her silver hand because like they're jerks. You know, it's like, right. I'm only that because you took the throne and threw me in here. But uh, yeah. anyway, so yeah. So <laughs> it's funny when I did she that. She didn't get it from like, you know, eating a lots of fish. Right, yeah, she got too much mercury. mercury. <laughs> <laughs> so while that's happening, Orm goes back to the lighthouse where he grew up and he blows mm. up the top half and he's like, I'm in the room I wasn't allowed to be in, Dad! Oh, look at you! I'm sitting on the bed with my shoes on! Ha ha ha! Look, I'm jumping on the bed! <laughs> you told me not to! Uh, and, and, you know, look at me now, Dad! Breaks a bunch of stuff and then blows stuff up. Aren't you like, proud of me now? Yeah, it's just like... <laughs> and I appreciate that, like, he is just pathetic. You're like, yeah. Ocean Master, shut up! You loser. You whiny bitch. Yes. Uh, but... This gets really interesting. Like, this book might as well be about, like, the benefits of therapy. <laughs> so, uh, Aquaman gets thrown into the thing. You know, he's like, all right, well, oh, so Bress is like, well, maybe we'll kill you, guy from the water. We don't know your name's Aquaman or Arthur or whatever that is. Like, we don't even know what you are. Yeah, and he's like, all right, well, I'm a badass and a superhero. Oh, also, because this is like a Atlantean stealth mission and because he's kind of a jerk, when he took off his Aquaman costume, he left his Justice League communicator. So we can't call mm. ah. Vibe to come okay. save him. All his, all his very useful friends. <laughs> There's one that he does limit he can't call, mm. and that's Zatanna. And that's Superman. Ah. <laughs> so <laughs> Superman wouldn't be caught dead near just like Detroit. <laughs> so uh, they're, they're like, so let's find out what this guy's all about. Let's probe his mind using our telepathy now established, because we all were. <laughs> right, because it's also magic and stuff. Sure, yeah. So they, they probe his mind. He's like, hey, get out of there. And we see, like, you know, basically what Arthur has been up to since this time, also establishing, like, who Ocean Master is. Maybe this is your first comic book. You if, don't know who these characters are. If oh. they're not telepathic, can't they also probe Silverhand's mind and know that she didn't set up the theft of the crystal? Yeah, but only Bress is the one who's doing it. And, oh. like, she's, like, telling everybody else what's going on. Yeah, I looked at her mind. Uh, she stole it. Yep. Well, and, and I think that, like, the people who are helping her are also part of the, you know, coup. Right. So Aquaman's mind is being probed by these women, and he really doesn't appreciate it. He's like, I've been... At the end of it, he's he cradles like a baby and goes, I've been violated. And I'm like, Jesus. Yikes. So there's nothing in there about stealing anything. So right. she's like, well, that didn't get us anything. So she just grabs Silverhand and, like, by the, by the face, she goes, where's the Leah Fail? The Leah Fail is the thing they call it. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's fine. Where's the Pisces? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, whatever. So anyway, uh, we're going to throw your, your Aquaman into the arena. He's going to fight Srang of the Fear Blog. <laughs> Not Srang, ah! he's the most bloodthirsty. Of the Fear Blog. The fight of the Fear Blog. That's awesome. Oh my god damn it. Sure. <laughs> Let's fight Shmlug of uh, the Liberty Flu. What is this, Rick and Morty? <laughs> Oh, Shrang is here for business! <laughs> he totally is! For three minutes! <laughs> so Vanko puts on his armor finally and he's like, All right, I'm gonna mount the war seahorse. You better stop me! I'm if gonna anybody, do it! I hope Aquaman finds that information before I die by, you know, tanks and submarines. I've mounted my seahorse, but maybe a hearty breakfast first. <laughs> a war breakfast for all of my friends! Uh, Yay, war breakfast! Yay, he's the best king! But then we're gonna kill the service war, right? Oh, oh, oh absolutely. definitely. <laughs> absolutely. Just just as soon as we're done with breakfast. Oh, look. Oh, oh man. It's already 11.30. Maybe we should just roll right into lunch. I'm really, I'm really stuffed after that war breakfast. So maybe, right. maybe a nap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then comes the, the, the entertainment <laughs> to oh, rally the troops. I feel like you're not actually going to invade. Oh the no, I'm oh, definitely, no. dude. Look at me. I'm totally decked out. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Would I put on all this armor if I wasn't going to invade the service? Come on, world? listen to this guy. He says I don't want to invade the service. <laughs> it sounds like you should be thrown into the pits. Anyone who doesn't believe I'm going to do it goes into the pits. Yeah, so, Monarchy's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know, Bress like 
gathers everybody together. She's like, all right, everybody, we're going to kill this guy unless he gives back the Leah fail. They're like, yeah, the Leah fail, get it back. And then, Aren't you telepathic? Why don't you just get the information from his head? Oh, I did, I didn't get it, so I'm going to have to get more. He, well, he also resists their charms. Because oh. like, he's, of course, telepathic as well. He's using, you know. He's, he's too strong. Yeah, he is yeah, too strong. He breaks, they, the, he breaks the link. I thought he was only telepathic with sea creatures. He's also telepathic here. Well, well they are sea creatures. Thing, that's the thing, is they are. Yeah, is he telepathic with aqua people? Like the people of Atlantis? Can he control them? I mean, he's never tried. But now he did, and he can, so sure. Yeah. Only to the extent that he can repel mind attacks, maybe. Exactly. But uh, you'll see that in action as well in this battle with Srang, because, like, you know, he's just like, all right. Like, everyone's yelling. You know, Silverhand and Briss are all like, oh, I should be the king. You should be, you know, you, you took it on unfair, blah, blah, blah. Like, <laughs> how is Srang? Srang, this big, horrible monster creature that you, like, that took my arm, he's actually a sworn enemy of our entire race. And he's like our boogeyman. And suddenly he's like, the guy in the arena that we fight. <laughs> like, what? how did you, how did you square that circle, Briss? Like, what the fuck? And clearly, you know, Bress used the cavalcade of women psychic magic people to control him. To control him. Right. And that's what Nauta discovers, right? Or at least she gleans that. Meanwhile, Aquaman is in the arena. He's like, all right. Like, I'm on the Justice League. I, I, I've got enough. So he's like, I'm going to beat the shit out of this stupid <laughs> small mouth bass. He, he beats the shit out of him. Then he also, like, uses his telepathy to be like, quit hitting yourself. Quit hitting and, yourself. Well, no. He he finally realizes after, like, getting a bloody nose, wait a minute. This guy's a sea creature. Fuck off. And when he does, it breaks the psychic connection from the, the psychics uh -huh. that Bress has been using to control him. Oh, so no. now he's free. He's like, oh shit, I'm in third and oh, I'm gonna kill all you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just, he just grabs the column and says, breaking shit. And they're like, oh shit. <laughs> That's and Aquaman's awesome. like, hey, Nada, let's go. And she's like, wait, no, we can't. The, the beast people. has been free. He's like, your people will be fine. Whatever, let's go. Ah, look what they did to you. Let them die. <laughs> look at your arm. So they leave. And then, of That's course, amazing. But, like, but Bress, of course, sends like the the twelve mystics to contain him. Srang <laughs> has now been waylaid by the mystics, so now they can tr control him, but they can't block Nauta's own magic power. So she's mm. like a full sorceress again. But uh, sh they grab a sailfish and and, and swim away. You know, mm. that is to say, uh, Silverhand and Aquaman. I feel like this is going to be a major challenge to Bress's power that yeah. she brought this monster in and it went it doesn't work for out well, a few minutes or so, seconds. Yes. That's disturbing. Oh yes. Well, you see <laughs> elsewhere Ocean Master's recruiting. And what he's recruiting it doesn't it's it established here but clearly like fascist creatures from another heretofore unestablished one of Atlantean the other 12 tri tribes. Yeah. Yeah, these are the Marzon. And oh. uh, the Marzon are like more savage and uh, less discerning. Oh, a whole people that's more savage. Yeah. All of them. Right? <laughs> well, they fall to, you know, fascism so quickly, you know? <laughs> but I mean, Orm does probably threaten to blow them up. He well, he actually explains how he manages to control the Marzon. And it's not like well, through mental telepathy or anything like that. Is it that their people recently lost a major war and inflation is just rampant <laughs> and the government can't... Uh, can't keep up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, no, he's, he just dazzles them with a magical light show. Oh. They're like, oh, you're a god. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm totally a god. Yep. To you. <laughs> For all sure. purposes. I learned yeah. from Ghostbusters. As far as they're concerned, yes. When people yes. ask about my god, I say yes. <laughs> I say yes. 86, that movie came out two years ago. It's all fresh in everybody's mind. So Silverhand is like, now that I'm a full sorcerer again, I can see like the magical lines that like flow from artifacts. Uh -huh. And I know that the Leah fail or perhaps your item that was stolen from Atlantis uh, is leaving like a kind of magical, mystical trail behind it of energy that I can see. And so let's follow the trail like through the currents of the ocean. And when they do, they end up at the realm of the Marzen and uh, they get waylaid by these people. And uh, an ocean master's there going like, yeah, and I'm controlling them. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I saw in this panel, it's your <laughs> shape. I, I don't care if it's silhouetted. I know it's you. you we're not gonna establish another Aquaman villain that looks just <laughs> like you in the zero hour. No, it's a big reveal. You didn't know it was me. Yes. This is an epic moment where you're I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm the master of oceans. Yes. Also, it's great because like we know like we know it's Ocean Master, but Aquaman doesn't. And Aquaman is like, <laughs> Aquaman gets into the Marzen territory and he sees these people. He's like, oh, new people, that's crazy. And then one of the sea creatures is like, hey, we found Ocean Master. And he's like, where? And <laughs> Ocean Master shows up. He's like, I'm right here, asshole. <laughs> you're like, what? <laughs> I've been trying to catch up with this whole time. Oh, I found him. 
He's right here. It's yeah. Like, Ocean Master. Ocean Master's the bad guy. He what? Can't be the bad guy. Oh wait, did he attack my city? Oh, that's right. He blew my city. Oh, oh damn, yeah, damn it! I should have put two into this. I am to all this? really bad at this. Yeah. Not even my blue suit can help me. <laughs> How can he see me in this? They have, they, I, should be, I should be invisible. <laughs> <laughs> it's the, in fact, it's almost like I am invisible to no one because when I tried to actually sneak into Thurn and Oog, they saw me immediately and I was arrested. Yep. It never worked as a stealth suit. You never even like tried to make it work as one. <laughs> no. He just f swam right up to those guards and said, hey. Yes, and then tried to distract them. Yeah. Like had he been in the middle of a school of fish. Right, maybe, maybe that yeah. would have worked. If he hadn't because alerted them to the fact he was only there. Only if they were the clownfish, fish. they could at least obscure some of that hair. <laughs> so there, there's, a, there's a bit of dialogue that I want to point out because I'm just like, that doesn't, doesn't track. <laughs> and it's just, I don't want to get hung up on it because it happens a lot. Uh-huh. But Aquaman yells at Ocean Master and he says, Orm, what are you doing here? And he says, it looks like I'm finally getting the better of you. And I'm like, you didn't say that. He said, what are you doing here? <laughs> like, it looks like I'm getting the better of you. No, you are getting the better of him. Right. It, it doesn't say, what does it look like you're doing here? Right. Like. N it's like it's like the dialogue was written by two different people who weren't talking to each other. Yeah. It looks like, I mean, really, it looks like I'm splaying and lording it over on you is what I'm doing. <laughs> Ocean Master is like, oh, and who's this cute little chicky? I know that you're married, but I guess you got a side piece here and I'm gonna start touching her without her permission, ha uh ha. -huh. And she's like, all right. Like she, she's like, I can kill you in a second. But she doesn't and she can't, but whatever. She seems uh, to have no. She can't turn her silver arm into a pointed tip and or, just, or just right punch him skull. with it. I mean, he's a guy. You know, he may have like magic powers now, but like so? He, he has, his teeth will still break. Exactly, he still has bones, right? <laughs> so uh, he punches her a bunch and Aquaman's oh. like, and Aquaman's so pissed. He's like, what the fuck, man? Ocean Master throws them to the giant crab. Oh my God, they get thrown to another creature? Yeah, and it's for no reason, I love it. He throws them to this giant crab and the giant crab grabs them and Aquaman's like, it's great, I'll just use my mental powers to tell him to knock it off. And he doesn't, it doesn't work and we don't explain why. I'm assuming it's because it's magic. But right. he just takes them and then when they arrive at their destination, you assume it's gonna be like a lair or some kind of like a, you assume it's gonna be some kind of dungeon or it's gonna be an arena again. But no, it's just a, an ice palace that Orm makes and Orm's there. So like. Orm had to be like, all right, so long, enjoy the giant crab. Oh shit, I gotta get there before they arrive so that I can. <laughs> Welcome to a, yeah, nice palace. Like that's what happens. And you're like, what? Like, wh why did you do that? Why did you just do it here? And it's like, because we needed him to go to the ice palace. And like, for no reason. Because I wanted to draw an ice palace. I mean, it would be cool. And also we needed a scene where Aquaman and Nauta are like going somewhere without are you like it's against their will? Yeah. So that Aquaman can be like, wasn't always like this, and then well, explain his his pre-crisis origin to her. So I, I think you're forgetting, we're in the third issue. They got to fight a giant spider in the third issue. That's true. <laughs> it's true. They do. Go. So we just get Aquaman's origin. We explain like who Yay. Ocean Master is and how he his was new origin. No, his old, his old origin. origin the again. old origin where Ocean Master is actually just full human and not Atlantean. Right. Because we haven't established that yet. But we need to reestablish what his origin is because this might be someone's first Aquaman comic book. <laughs> yeah, but so were the last two. He didn't do it then. What about the first one? Why didn't they establish it here? Well, I got to establish the cool magic lore that I'm going to like rest this whole plot on. Uh. Don't treat it like everyone's first comic. <laughs> I mean, Stan wasn't wrong. Does it help? Sure. Is this necessary? I mean, it wasn't for me, but if I'm an 86 and I don't know anything about Aquaman and I bought it because of his cool blue suit, I guess I'd appreciate it, especially because I don't know anything about Ocean Master. I like, guess you'd be really like, upset who when is cool this blue guy? suit goes away. Right, I guess I could pick up who's who of the DCU and grab the issue that's in the O's. <laughs> but again, I'd have to know that exists. I think if I didn't know who Ocean Master was, I, I would have- I it from him calling him brother no, and stuff. I was gonna say, I think I would have quit this book after the first one. I'd have been That's like, true. well, that was random and didn't make any sense. Yeah, and I don't made no attempt to contextualize it. Yeah, so nah, not for me. I guess I'm supposed to know who this guy is. Nah, never mind. But I don't. I'm not so gonna I'm wait till issue three and then be like, oh, <laughs> they no, explained no, no, no. You're it. You're just so dazzled by the art and the story right. that you're like, I wanna know more, maybe they'll tell me later. <sighs> See, I'm upset the fact that the crab grabs them both with the same claw. Yeah. There's two it of them. It should be two claws. It should grab each one of them. I agree. Because you can't grab two people 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would of cut the first sizes. one in half. That's no, true. Yeah. Well, but he wouldn't. But he'd be, but he'd have to yell his origin at her. Okay, so it all started back in May. <laughs> He's got to be next to her in order Can't for the scene to work. Can't talk to each other? Yeah, but then we'd have to establish that they're like able to do that. And we haven't. And we haven't really done that. We've only established that he can use his mental powers to like make Sren go away. Right, or, break, or talk or to, break talk psychic to lesser creatures, yes. or she disrupt is, psychic connections to higher creatures. Yes. I'm glad you're pointing that out. Right. She is not a lesser creature. She is no. a badass. So we get to the ice palace, and she's like, whoa, an ice palace. And he's like, yeah, you like what I've done with the place? <laughs> you're like, all right. Like, done with the place? It's new. Like, is this part of the ocean cold, but where they just were isn't cold? No, it, it's more like he's showing off his new magic powers. Oh, it's magic, right. Because we didn't know he was magic until now, because right. he wasn't until Because he wasn't, right, okay. They are going to explain yeah, that. Yeah, he was just oh, a yeah. douche before. Oh, no, they do. Yeah, he was just some douche stealing Atlantean technology. Not unlike Black Manta. Right. So, <laughs> while he's here, gloating with his brother and presumably his girlfriend or whatever, his, his, <laughs> his, his affair partner. Piece. Yeah, yeah, the Atlantean army, led by Volko, <laughs> is rallying. Volko took the long way. They're going to America, by the way, because that's where Aquaman's from, and we're going to mess that place up. No, we have to go with the currents. <laughs> yeah, we got to go back around Cape Horn! <laughs> But so they finally get like almost there, and then Ocean Master shows up and blows up the army. Oh. You're like what? <laughs> Volko doesn't die. So it wasn't part of his plan for them to attack the surface world and start like a be. war they can't win. No, he, yeah, no, he seemingly has like no plan. He's just he's just being a dick. I think he's just wrecking everything of his brothers. Well, that's very true. And you're and you're keying into something that's essential to his plot, which is I'm ma- I'm messing with everything that Aquaman holds dear. I'm mm. destroying his old house. I'm destroying his new town. I'm destroying his people. I'm blowing up like statues and shit that maybe he might like someday. Maybe I should get <laughs> Mera here so that she can see him with another woman. That would be brilliant. That would actually be more destructive than anything he could do. Mm. But uh, he doesn't. And instead, he's just more like nice. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Nice. <laughs> like, that's it. It's just like, okay, Orm. I don't know what you're implying. She's just a friend. She's just a friend who's totally hot. And where is Mera, by the way? Yeah, come sure. She come with you. I can see her front dorsal fin. <laughs> oh, no. It's supposed to be camouflaged. It's always camouflaged. So Ocean Master explains, like, you're probably wondering how I'm got to be so OP. Well, I really don't care. Well, <laughs> well it's time for me to monologue. Well, here I go. Uh. So he explains, like, I used to be pretty lame. Right. You know? But, but then I went to the library. Yes. Yeah. What? It's all thanks to the books at my local library. <laughs> no, he really does go to the friggin' Atlantean library or like some secret ma- oh. magical library that he finds under the sea. He, like he Dr. literally. Strange? He, he just studies. Yes. Oh. Yes. He's not very good because he was bad in school, which he says, <laughs> but he's, he studies harder than he ever did in real school on this stuff until he learned enough. And mostly he'd studied like history, but also magical spells, like being able to like cast colors and stuff like that. And so- Oh yeah, prismatic ray. Yeah, so he makes these colors, which dazzles the Marzins, which allows him to have like a base operations and some slave labor to like get him things like fish to eat or something. It really doesn't <laughs> factor in, but he just basically- That's not teaching a man to fish. No, it's not. But That's he, subjecting your food. <laughs> that's right. But he also explains like, this is just where I set up my shop. Like I just needed a, a base of operations and and resources that I could get to do what right. I'm doing. And these people are the most easily manipulated, so. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but he's like, I learned all this history from like the first issue, you know, <laughs> and I learned about like how, about the origin of magic and where it all came from. And, and, and it all comes from these, like, this, this, this inner huge conflict between these two brothers. Brothers, get it? That's us. Like <laughs> we're carrying out this ancient brotherly rivalry that Killed magic. Is and every I'm... pair of brothers doing that? I don't no, understand. but I just like it's. Yeah, when they're... my brother takes like my toy. Yeah. And I yell at him <laughs> for it's, it. It's a representation. The same thing? Yeah, it, it yeah. echoes the true calling from millions of years ago that what everybody about had. if I fight with my sister? Is that the same thing? No, because it no, wasn't brother and sister. That's, that's, that's a different. Sister. That's totally, well, that's different. totally different. So, uh, he, he, but he also learns about like the mystical artifact, the 12 of them, and how like. While they were eventually, because magic kind of like went away or it diminished, like they don't have magic. They must have had enough residual magic that I could use to augment my own newly found magical abilities. So he goes on like this quest where he basically learns a one honing spell. He's like, I'm really bad at it, but I learned how to like make colors and how to hone in on mystical artifacts. Mm. And so he did, and he found a couple, most of it being the Leah fail and the one from Atlantis. But the one from Atlantis is the third one he finds because the first two he finds, one of them is I think from the Marsins, but it doesn't matter. And the other, 
But how did he steal them in the first place? How did he get past all the defenses and shit? Well, here's the thing. What do you mean defenses? It was probably just like sitting there. Well, Atlantis has special defenses, but the others didn't. The Leah Fail was just sitting there. So he took that one and oh. another one, and each time he gets one, he gets more powerful. I see. So when he had two, and those two were like compliments, they were able to augment his power so much that he was able to steal the one from Atlantis, which then fucked up Aquaman's plans and set those Atlanteans into war. He's like, I'm screwing up everybody. And even though he yeah, didn't let them invade the surface world, he did help to push the Atlanteans against Aquaman. What he didn't see was that some of the Atlanteans were actually like, Holding up effigies of Aquaman in yeah, their like protests <laughs> for uh, you know for the for the new monarchy. Yeah, yeah but I saw then, a sign that said "Death to Aquaman." Yeah, yeah it's but, pretty but, pretty extreme well, language. But then you just wiped out their army. So well, just that army. You know, the oh, one that went first. The the ones that are left are still mad at. Oh, still sure. mad at him. Who cares? He's he is acting entirely emotionally. Right. You know, he's just he's like, just I'm like, ruining everything you care about. It's an impulse. He, so he explains, like, this is what I am now. I'm a magic-based character. And he will be, by the way, from here on out. Like, I just I just muck around in your life. Yes. Okay. And, and I, we got to stop him from getting the other seven. No, no. I just, they don't even talk about the other seven. Oh. He, just, he has five. He's like, this is pretty, this is pretty good. I'm happy with this. Right, it would be like, unrealistic if he got all 12. It would be ridiculous. It's like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not, doing, we're not going on a quest. We only have one more issue left. Let's just let's just stick with the five. Right. He's already powerful. We gotta we gotta leave the twelve for a later series where well, we're doing someone tries to two. get all twelve and then it ups the stake. Yeah. But also you you notice that like he blew up that 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 cadre of soldiers, but also yeah. he's here too. So he can also like astral project. Right. What? Yeah. Like he can be in two places at once. Uh, that's pretty powerful. It's pretty funny. That's only powerful. five artifacts. All right. Kind of sounds like maybe he should be landing Atlantis. <laughs> 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 so, who said that? <laughs> or at least throwing a nug. So Aquaman like jumps in and he just starts wailing on Ocean Master, and he's like, "This is for this is for what you did to Volko, and this is what you did for the Thernanogians, and this is for me." And then like he loses because like yeah. th because it's only the penultimate issue. And, well, he uh, also lost before when Ocean Master had fewer of those. Yeah, exactly. Artifacts. No, he has more, and he's more powerful. You're like, not going to win about. by just punching him. You already tried that. That didn't work. Right. So then uh, Ocean Master's <laughs> like, "All right, well this is fun, but I have more important things to do." And he disappears. Nakamura's oh. like, what the fuck? <laughs> Nana's like, did you get that out of your system? That feel good? Just being a big roided out That's douche nozzle, <laughs> punching fucking ghosts. Way to go. Oh, you're really, you must be some kind of wizard up there. <laughs> and then Ocean Master's like, nah, and then he leaves and he's like, I'm an idiot. Oh. And so I got beat by Ocean Master. Ooh, again, hours. Constantly. Uh, so Oh, the cover of this is insane. Good thing Mera's not here. <laughs> yeah, to see me fail like this. So Aquaman like freaks out because Ocean Master keeps projecting his face everywhere, being like, you're a douchebag and you got a tiny dick. And so he's like <laughs> smashing everything. He's like, oh, fuck you, Ocean Master. And so that's when he smashes the entire ice palace oh, okay. to nothing. He's trying to have sex with his wife and <laughs> projects his face there too. <laughs> oh, oh, you're really a real stallion. Why are you giving it to me? <laughs> <laughs> that's horrific. She's like, whoa, you, uh, you really freaked out. Did you notice how like, when you got more angry and stupid, Ocean Master got more powerful, and he's like, no. Learn? <laughs> I'm Aquaman, I don't learn shit. Well, I can friggin' break glass palaces if I punch them hard that, enough. That's it, yeah. Well, she's like, did you notice that like you destroyed the entire like citadel around you? And he's like, oh shit, like he was blinded by rage, mm. and he didn't even notice, and it's, it's, Pons are trying to be in like, oh, if I roid out, I can be really strong. No, you already, no, you lost, asshole. <laughs> it didn't help. It you didn't destroyed help something all. and nothing improved. Right? So it, it, it's, Pons are recognizes that Aquaman is like a humorless dick. Right. He has a reputation throughout the comics and the audience that he's unlikable. Mm, let's like, let, let's not just, learn a lesson. let's not do what modern comic book writers do and just forget what the last guy did and do whatever I want. Right. Let's actually have him go through what is known as a character arc. <laughs> Aquaman is like, damn it, I can't believe I left my JLA communicator. If it wasn't such a douchebag, I would have kept it. And then I could have had Zatanna here. She's got magic. Wait a minute, you've got magic. Use your magic to help me out. She's like, no. And he's like, what? Why not, you bitch? And she's like, because I don't want to. And he's like, that's, that's horse shit. Like, but I'm a good guy, you have to help me. Yes, and he's like, Ocean Master's gonna break everything, and you're, you're not gonna have help? What the crap, you know what, that makes sense, because nobody helps Aquaman. Aquaman's just some loser who hangs out in the ocean, he has no friends, and even though he's got a hot wife, he's more powerful than, she, than he is, uh, whatever. And so he just has a- He's like, wow, you're really proving I should help you right uh, now. Exactly, and so- Yikes. Uh, so then we go to the city of Tilapalan, 
And uh, Ocean Master goes there. He's like, hey, another group of people. And they're speaking another language. It was some crazy moon language. And he's <laughs> like, I can't understand a word you're saying. Uh, let me just wreck your shit. It just destroys their city. And you're just like, okay. So Ocean Master's a problem. Oh, boy. He's, he's out of control. Anger begets anger. And, like, it doesn't actually solve any problems. It just breaks shit around you. And so, like, they start, like, cooling down and explaining. Like, that's, like, your brother has a weakness that you have not tapped into. And it's that he is nothing but rage. Your rage comes from your desire to see positive outcomes and be because you're an eternal optimist, basically. Mm. And you're just routinely disappointed that things don't work out. So, like, if you don't get angry... <laughs> if you lowered your those, expectations, then you maybe, wouldn't be so disappointed. Be so yeah. but <laughs> maybe if you just gave your brother a hug. Well, kind of. Like, it's like your brother is just an... He's, a, he's always so angry, but he's angry and he has nothing left. Like, he has no love in his heart. But you do, like, you're mad at Ocean Master mostly because your brother doesn't care about you. Like, he he is tainting your good memories of your past. Mm. He's like, no, he does care about me. He cares about ruining my life. Yeah. So he essentially it, is like, wow, like, that's kind of deep and helpful. Mm. And what else can I get out of that? Like, how? what, what else do you have to teach me? What, what should I do next? I don't know what to do. How dumb it's, is yeah. it that he learns this lesson while he's still punging stuff? Well, because no, that's because you don't because we're almost built in a day. Like he's just yeah, like, you can't yeah. just be told one lesson and then you get and over then your I'm anger I'm issues. cured. Yeah, you're so angry. Maybe you should calm down. You're right. I'm, yeah! I'm still angry. Okay. Yeah, well, but, well but okay, so now you punch that thing and see and, how it's broken and, and then nothing's better. And nothing's nothing improved, did it? Yeah, well, and that's true. And then he breaks down crying and he's like, mm. "Help me." And she's like, "There we go. Ah. Now I will use my magic to help you because you asked." Right. Well, nicely. I asked before. Oh, well, yeah, but you were yeah, but you, no, were no, you demanded help. You demanded before. I help you because you wanted revenge on your brother, not because you wanted help. Right. So Ocean Master, like, raises this ancient city from the depths of the ocean into the surface world, and he's like, this is my place now. I'm going to friggin' set up here and then start blowing more shit up. That's I what I know why I had a crystal palace before. Uh, stupid. Yeah, so... What, what is your plan? This is it. You're seeing it on display. Just, just whatever comes into my head next. Right. Uh, now I'm gonna raise this city, and uh, that, that'll be my new base uh, yeah. ab above above the water. Yeah. Now. It's anyone who suddenly gets an immense amount of power or becomes insanely rich. Right. And yeah. has no plan and only does those things and is only motivated by <laughs> greed and avarice. And power. Yeah. yeah. Well, my plan was to get more power. And so I have it. And now what do I do? Well. Uh, the only other emotion I feel is like emptiness and rage for people that wronged me before I had power. So, so I guess I'll, I'll take it out on them. I'll <laughs> fill my emptiness with stuff and I'll quell my rage by killing those people. Yeah, right. there we go. That's Man, I'm great. <laughs> so Silverhand creates this magical pentagram that Aquaman is bade to enter. Uh, Ocean Master starts conjuring like crazy ass like oceanic monster beasts, like oh. spirits and shit. It's like, all right, I'm do I'm going, I'm taking it way too far now. Yes. So Aquaman, you thought I took it too far before. Right. Now, now it's it's the end. Now end it's the game. end game. I'm gonna take over the whole planet. So when Aquaman enters the pentagram, he is able now to astral project, oh. and so he sends himself out to face Ocean Master. Uh, but now, as oh, like from a, the safety of his from body. the safety of his body, yeah, yeah. Really, really leaving his body behind. So when Aquaman like dives into attack Ocean Master, he's like ah, uh, <laughs> that blasts Ocean Master's like essence out of his body. So now you got both spirits kind of battling on the astral plane or whatever. And sure. so as they're battling, like their fight is reflected in Ocean Master and Aquaman's like eternal struggle and what Ocean Master wants versus what Aquaman lost. You know, Aquaman is like. He, he's justifiably angry because, like, his infant son was murdered in front of him by, like, some guy who wanted to steal money and kill people. Like, you right. know, it's like, that's senseless and horrible. And his only living relative is Ocean Master, an <laughs> evil villain who's now a sorcerer. Like, mm -hmm. he, he, his rage comes from an understandable place, but he needs to learn to let it go mm -hmm. and to understand, like, why he's so angry at Ocean Master to begin with. And while they're f battling... Aquaman like comes to the conclusion, mostly guided by Silverhand's like narration, like despite his rage and th that which he's lost, he has a lot going for him in his life. Like he was embraced by the Justice League, and he like has friends. And well, he has, like, Justice League. Well, no, no, Justice no. League Detroit. That Justice League, but also we see that like <laughs> yeah, when he married one. when he married Mera, the real Justice League showed up. Oh, right, right. right. You know, like there, there they, are. They did like you once. And they might like you again. Maybe yeah, they like could you again. Maybe you chilled out. Some version of you was on the Justice League. Right. Well, what is Ocean Master have to look forward woman. to? Dying. Right. So you have it so much better than Ocean Master. Yeah. What are you well, complaining about? What are you complaining about? 
So, but, but but said nicely and and and, and triumphantly and carefully and, 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 and allowed for Aquaman compassion. to like recognize because he has compassion that raises the level of compassion in Aquaman's heart so that now he can look at his brother as his brother. And so as like he is tipping the scales and becoming more powerful as a result of not feeding into Ocean Master's rage, he's able to then kind of defeat Ocean Master or at least win the like strength battle or tip the, the scales the between the two of them. Battle, I guess. Yeah. And only when he like his heart is full of hope and love is he able to tell Ocean Master, Orm his brother, that he loves him. And when he does, that blows up Ocean Master. He oh. explodes. And then that knocks Aquaman's spirit back into his body, and he's like, "I'm back!" And Nod is like, "Oh, that means that you won. Let's go. Let's go see what happened." So then they f they swim over to Ocean Master, and, and they find a cloud of blood because he blew his up his helmet. Is oh my body. god! He's like, he's oh, like, he actually exploded. Yeah, and he's like, "I told my brother I loved him, and he exploded." How is that better? She's like, "Well, you don't have to worry about him anymore." Well, she's, she's like, just like, "Yes, it works." He's like, "What? What? The power of love defeated him." She's like, "He won't bother you anymore now." Like, <laughs> look, you know, I didn't say he was gonna <laughs> become a good guy. I just said that you'd win. You're, you're a monster. <laughs> he literally says, how could my loving kill him? I'm so confused. <laughs> so are we <laughs> as the so reader. Is the reader. Like, my parents and my son and now my brother are all dead. And she's like, and, like life is full of loss. Get over it. <laughs> like, Ouch. Only through you recognizing the positives in your life could you have been able to embrace your brother to begin with at all. Like, one day you were gonna kill your brother, at least you were able to kill him with love instead of friggin' hate. Oh, that's right. a wonderful lesson. If I get over my loss, will he come back to life? Absolutely not, although he does, because <laughs> well, he never he died does, in the first place. He, he comes back to life because he never died. Uh, but, I like, like it when she was he like, did. he was like a mass murdering psychopath. Yeah, he was never going he, to He needed to die. This. There was no chance of him not dying. Right, either like <laughs> my people were gonna destroy him or yeah. he was going to be killed by my hand, yeah. my silver hand. I know he's your brother, but. <laughs> yeah, no, Aquaman is also like very human about all this. Like he, mm. she's like, you will, you will move on. He's like, easy for you to say. <laughs> like my brother exploded. And then he's like, "You made me express my love for him, and then he and died. And it killed him. And it, it took it away from me right after I got him back. Right. Like, well, the other, you're he, awful. Well, the thing is, he never like <laughs> he never got his brother back. Well, his brother no, wasn't but like, like, I love you too. In his heart, he like he was able to like see him. who he was. Yeah. 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 He was like, oh, I care about you, and I'd love you. Yeah. Kaboom. Yeah, because your brother hated you so much. <laughs> it was entirely one sided. He yeah. never loved you. Yeah, and he never was going to. But like, that's the thing is that that's not true." Mm. That's, what, that's the PS at the end of the story. Oh. But uh, he goes, well, now what do we do? And they see like their two crystals are on the ground. She goes, well, I'm gonna take my crystal <laughs> and I'm gonna go back and they're not gonna wanna mix with you guys. So I guess this is goodbye forever. And he's like, oh, uh, I, thought I, thought we were, we were... I thought we were gonna, and she's like, no. Aren't you married? <gasps> oh yeah. Oh, you did hear that. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Well, I could have a diplomatic relation with you. Right, she's like, Bring no our thanks. tribes together maybe, yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I get it. I get it. No thanks. <laughs> By tribes I've seen your fin. I meant we were gonna... <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I know. I'm not interested. You're gross. But can you give me a lift back <laughs> on your seahorse? And he's like, yeah. And after, like... <laughs> they sit in silence, awkward silence, for two hours. <laughs> they just sail through the ocean. <laughs> seahorse uh, is like, this is real awkward. <laughs> yeah. You gotta say something. Well, I'm sorry, it wasn't a seahorse. Oh, no. It, it's a sea turtle, I believe. Oh, shit. That's fun. Aquaman then pulls a Fosse and just goes like, ha ha! And I, there's no way this wasn't Bob Fosse. Like, I get it, but he's like, wow, like, I have a new lease on life. Like, I'm not a dick anymore. Because I, like, purged my rage. It's not like- And destroyed my brother. Yeah, well, but like, the things, well, that's that, incidental. The things that led me there were no less true. And, and right. are still good for me, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So I'm gonna be less of a jackass from now on until they take my hand. <laughs> And then I'm gonna go right back to being an asshole. Right. So. I was at least dynamic when I was an asshole. So they hop on a sea turtle and they leave. And then, just at the end, we see that Ocean Master says, Artie, are you there? Help. Oh. So like, Ocean Master seems to have some regard for his brother after all. Or maybe that love like broke through his icy heart. Right. Uh, or. Or he's just under some rubble. He's under some rubble and needs help. I mean, the fact is like, he doesn't help him, so I guess Orm can then re-hate his brother because he never right. showed I, up to help him out. I weakly called for help. 
Right? Since he's under the water now and he doesn't have the crystals no, anymore? He doesn't have the mask either. Yeah. Uh, well, well, he still has a little bit of magic, though. Yeah. Or something. Sure. I mean, he doesn't die. Yeah. Well, he still remembers the spell that allows him to breathe underwater. Well, it wasn't a spell originally. It was Atlantic technology that he stole. Yeah, so but like, then he learned but, spells and maybe he and learned And maybe that he one. learned like that one, too, just in case the helmet came off, <laughs> which it did. So, yeah. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm just going to have it as a backup plan in case. Yeah. I, I would never lose my helmet. I mean, just, if, just, in, just in case. If you're going to operate mostly underwater... I you better want, have a backup plan. Yeah, I would want two methods of breathing. If I'm going to jump out of an airplane, I want two chutes. Yeah. If I'm going to go underwater, I want two <laughs> tanks or at least some kind of thing. Yeah. I don't think you get one. I think I think when you go underwater, you just got the one. I mean, you can have, you two, can tanks, have two tanks. But I think they're a mixed tank. Yeah, it's just point. it's just one uh, one mask. Oh, sure, that's fine. So mm. yeah, but I want two masks. I want two masks. I want, I want, I want, I want everything fully redundant. I mean, I would. Yeah, I'm not going under there. With, with, with a safety with no backup, right? Fuck that. No. So there was going to be a sequel to this uh, with the same creative team. They DC greenlit it immediately, <laughs> and then uh, the artist admitted that like after I think like almost a year, uh, he got five pages, and he's like, "It's just too hard, and I didn't want to do it." So uh, they just didn't. <laughs> I'm just I'm really then, wiped out. And they didn't give him wow. a series that didn't launch an Aquaman ongoing. So they got one annual where they wrapped up any loose threads, including Silverhand. And then oh. uh, moved on. And then eventually his new origin came to the fore and this was forgotten. But they did give the suit to an Aquaman doppelganger supervillain. And oh. so, you know, like in 95, it came back, you know, and that's more than I could say for like some. Yeah, at least Electric right. Blue Superman didn't come back. It did. Oh, no, no, no. Livewire gets that suit Everything at some point. And that's really cool. I was like, yes, that fits because she's electric. Boogie woogie woogie. <laughs> I gotta admit, it's kind of fun. It's a good story. I I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's pretty good. It was a little like hokey. It, I mean, look. Yeah. yeah there are parts that. Nineteen eighty six Aquaman, right? But I I really appreciate the like genuine effort to make Aquaman relevant, to give him a real story that is steeped entirely in his origins, give him a villain that is directly connected to him so that you feel all the like emotional stakes while also tying it in with a greater part of the DC universe that they are trying to build out. I think if you are going to read any like formative Aquaman stories, this is one of them. Like mm. this is an actual formative, important totemic moment in Aquaman's history that most people don't remember. And uh, I, I don't remember how much of it actually carries over outside of like Ocean Master's redefinition and you know, the magical stuff. Right. I can only hope that the uh, the new stealth suit that he wears in the new movie works just as well as it did for him in this movie. I feel like it won't. Like, I feel like he's going to wear it and then it's going to be like he doesn't need yeah, it Yeah, it's just going to look cool for a scene and then... Aquaman. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. So, uh, the crab people. Oh, yes. yes. I want to get back to the crab people. Please. Are they, if I remember correctly, they're the deep... No, no, the no. deep the are deep like the ankle fish creatures. They're oh, not really, they're villains. They're villains. Yeah, the right. deep are bad. They're in the they're in the trench. They're what, from the trench. They're from the trench, right? Well, yeah, what yeah. are the crab people? The, the, are they the, named? They're just crab people. They have a name, sure. but they are one of the. Uh, they're one of the tribes. The, or the tribes whatever, of, of, yeah, of Atlantis. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Do and, they are they around at this point, or are they a later thing? I think they're a later thing. Okay. Can you believe that they almost made an Aquaman spinoff movie that was going to be horror driven, starring? the creatures of the trench. Like, that was really? a big plan. They were like, no, that is happening. Because what? James Wan, who directs the Aquaman movies, they were building is the a world. horror director. He's like, oh. I want to do something with these with these these trench monsters. I think that'd be cool. That's that's cool like, that was also a great scene. It's a movie. fantastic scene. It's like, yeah, no, that's why you get a horror director to do really cool sequences like that. But like, I'm not watching a spin-off Aquaman movie. <laughs>